Hey guys, welcome to Different Church's online service. Whether you're watching with us on YouTube or listening to us on a podcast, we are so thankful that you decided to join us. My name is Catherine and I'm so excited to be here with you all today. And I have a couple of ways to get you connected. If you're looking for more information about our church, like how to be a part or how to give, you can visit us online at dfrnt.church. If you're like me and you spend a ton of time on social media, head over to whatever platform you use most and give us a follow. This is one of the best ways to stay connected. We are in our series, Weird. People have made the Holy Spirit weird and kind of hard to talk about. So in this series, we're gonna learn how to get more familiar with who he is and what he does. And to go along with the series, we are selling journals. This year is all about growing, so we are gonna write down everything that God is speaking to us. These are just $15, so if you would like to purchase one, you can Venmo us at Different Church and put your address in the memo line. All right, enough for me, let's jump into the message. YouTube podcast, MySpace, Club Penguin. I have no idea where you're watching from, how you got here, man. I Listen, I just want to say thank you so much for being a part, for hanging out, for vibing with us. Listen, my name is Tyler. If you're new, maybe you saw something on TikTok or something and you came over, you're listening, and you're on the treadmill. Listen, do another... However long, however long this sermon is, stay on the treadmill. You might actually, if you start getting dizzy, get off. But outside of that, stay on. We're growing. We're grinding. We're in a series called Weird because so many people, so many churches, right? Like, I've got Jesus. I've got God. And you can keep the Holy Spirit stuff to the side. Nah, 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 fam. Like, we don't do that. We Listen, and I know someone's going to get mad online. We preach the whole Bible, not just the Bible that we like right? I preach every single word. We read every single word. We, and we say it all the time. And, and really for this series, we've been saying, all right, like I believe in God. And, and what does the Bible say? Listen, what does the Bible say? That's easy. The demons do that. But I believe in God. So does Satan. That is not the goal. Belief is not, it's do I trust God? Do I trust his word? Do I trust everything in it? Can I, can I read a scripture? I did this last week. You know how my ADHD gets going and, and online, you guys already know. People call, like people will literally comment in the comment section, I love Tyler's side quest. Stop. <laughs> but go with it. Go on it with me. John 8, th- th- this isn't where we're going to be, but this is just a passage for you to write down if you're a note taker or anything like that. John 8, 32, look at what it says. And you will, what's that word? Know the truth. And then the truth sets you free. You know what it doesn't say? Oh, don't get mad at me. You know what it doesn't say? You will read the truth. It doesn't say you will listen to the truth. It does not say that you will post the truth on the timeline. What does it say? I will know the truth. Like there's a difference between reading the word and understanding the word. And I think that a lot of us, and and listen, I'm already going to get canceled. We're three minutes into this thing. Stop reading the Bible. Start understanding the Bible. Because I will literally go, I did my Bible in a year, but all year did the Bible change you. You can read something and not apply something. That's like me watching workout videos, never going to the gym, never doing anything. I never, I, I watched, I never applied. And too many of us, I do my Bible reading app, I do my right Bible reading plan, but that never That never does anything in my life. That never does anything in my marriage. That doesn't do anything in my parenting. You didn't change the way I talk. You knew, you read it, you didn't know it. And if you don't know the word, listen, if you don't know the word, it'll be very dangerous because it says, and you will know the truth and the truth will what? Set you free. You can't be set free from something you don't know what holds you in captivity. And a lot of times you'll pray that, that, God, make my money right. The money's not the issue in your life. The greed is the issue in your life because he'll give you more money. You'll get into more debt. Being single is not the thorn in your side that Paul said. No, 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 no. It's a lack of identity and you don't know how to sit with yourself and spend time with God. 
That's the problem. It's a lack of identity. The marriage, boy, if this, if this woman would just leave, if this man would just leave. No, 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 no. Your inability to serve is the problem, not your spouse. But if you don't know the word, listen, if you don't know the word, you won't know what's holding you captive and you'll pray for things that God's like, bro, that is the least of your problems. That is the least of your problems. Getting steak dinners and stuff on dates. That is the least of your problems. But if you have a Bible, we turn to 1 Corinthians 13. I have to understand the word, not just read the word, not just hear the word. I have to. But I get it all the time. Like, and listen, because our comment section online, our comment section goes crazy 24-7. I would never trust. I would never trust. A pre- listen, if you can trust Wikipedia more than the work, word of God, you've got a problem. Because right now, I don't know where my phone is. Right now, I'll go edit every single article you read. I'll go manipulate every single thing you read. Well, I listen to Wikipedia because it doesn't ask me for money like you preachers do. Yes, it does. It says donate $1, $5, $10. You don't have a problem having faith. You just have faith in unreliable sources. You want to have faith in the person that stabbed you in the back. You want to have faith in the manager that that fired you. You want to have faith in everyone but the creator of the universe. You don't have no faith. You have selective faith. And I've got to be very careful that I don't choose to believe everyone but God because I'll go where everyone wants me to go but where God wants me to go. I got to be careful. So if, we, if you turn to 1 Corinthians 13, and, 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 and what's 1 Corinthians 13? Everyone knows if you've been to a wedding, like that's the love chapter. Listen, that's the love chapter. That's a wedding chapter. I like that one. I like 1 Corinthians 13. It's like I, I do it sometimes whenever I'm doing a wedding. I do it sometimes. But then as I... As I got older, I, I kind of, and I began to read the word, I figured out that 1 Corinthians 13 doesn't mean what I thought that it means. It doesn't really have, listen, in the context, imagine that, reading the Bible in context online, that's crazy, right? If you read it in context, it's a little bit different than what I, I, I listened to it at a, at a wedding. I listened to it at a wedding. And, and before, I, like, before I spoil it, listen, online, in-house, before I spoil it, I know some of us have like, we went to Hobby Lobby and we got love is patient, love is kind. It hangs in your, in your uh, kitchen or it hangs in your bathroom. That's cool. It may not mean, it, it kind of means about spiritual gifts, but I think God shows that he is patient, he is kind. Like I think it applies there, but the context that is written in Tyler's big brain this morning, listen, we're teaching, we're teaching. The context is talking about, we've been talking about spiritual gifts. If I can preach, if I can sing, if I can heal, if I can do miracles, speak in tongues, interpret all of it. It says, well, can we go to it? Can we go to it real quick? Look at, we know 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. But how many of us know that there are three verses before four that we probably need to read that are probably important? And so we're going to do, what does Netflix do? Like, like, uh, Last time, like when the season, like a new season starts, it'll kind of recap you. Let me recap you with where we're at. Verse one, Paul says, look at what he says. Verse one, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the, some of us are anointed and annoying. Verse two, (laughs) stop. Verse two. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, I like that part, but didn't love others, there was a comma, I would be, what's that word? Nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing, period, with a T at the end. But look at verse 4, and this is where the wedding comes in. Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. Keeps a record of wrongs. Are we going to skip he called me out? Are we going to skip he stepped on my throat right there? No wonder we don't do that in. Because if we were to do it in a wedding, we'd say, Husbands, I know you think you know everything, but if you don't love, you sound terrible. But we don't, we don't do that, right? We don't do that. And I know some of us, we've got 1 Corinthians 13 like in our house and we love it. At least you don't have it tattooed all the way down your arm like I do. When I first got saved, I read 1 Corinthians 13, like love is patient, love is kind. And I remember I, I thought like, man, I, 
I got to get that because I want to remind myself of how much God loves me. And I think that it's true. I do. I think God is patient. I think God is kind. But as I began to study the word, I realized it didn't have as much to do with God loving me and what I do, how I love people as I use my gifts to serve people. But I got it in every now. But listen, little did I know I got it tattooed on the arm that I hold my microphone in. So when I preach now, if I don't ever, I get done preaching, if I don't reach this hand out and help somebody, if I don't use this hand to hug somebody that's in the hospital, if I don't use this very hand that holds the microphone, I have no business holding the microphone if I won't go pray for them in their home. I constantly, I need the reminder, I have these gifts, you have gifts, you have talents, you have anointing, you've been anointed by God, but if you don't use them in love, love, all of it's worthless, all of it's worthless. But it's crazy because you'll read the Bible and we won't run to the context. And why is context so important? Remember, I'm getting big brain this morning. We're teaching, we're teaching online. Why is context so important? And it's easy because you won't, listen, if you don't understand the word, you won't be able to stand on the word. And I have to understand everything in this word. That means I take a little more time when I study the word. People come up to me, man, I read the whole book of this today. I'm like, bro, did, what? Did you, do, do you know anything that happened? Did you study any of it? Did you look into it? Did it change your life? No, but I read it. Okay, let's figure out how do I apply the word to my life? How do I get it deep into my soul? What is, uh, uh, David said, like, I meditate on your word daily. I write it. How does a young man stay in the path of purity? By writing his word in my heart, Psalms 119 says. How do I stay pure? By writing the word. Not hearing the word. Not, not uh, whatever. Meditating and writing it. Writing it in the heart. Context is so big. If I told you right now, my daughter is in a room by herself with another man and he had a knife in his hand and he was cutting into my daughter. What would you say? Get her out. Get her out. Where do we go? I'll swing on them. But then I said, no, she, she's having surgery right now. She's sick and this is going to save her life. You go, context, please. Why didn't you tell me what was, why didn't you tell me what was going on? Context is so important because it gives you the fullness of what's happening. When we take, listen, and a lot of us, we, when we read the Bible, we like the verse sent to us. We get the notification. I got my Bible verse of the day. Listen, candy is bite-sized. Steak is never bite-sized. There are some things when you get the, the notification, uh, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, Jeremiah 29, 11, and you don't know Jeremiah 29, 10 says, you're going to be in captivity and in slavery for 70 years, but I know the plans. When you're in captivity, you'll feel stuck because you didn't know the fullness of the word. Context is key. Context is key. So we've been using love is patient, love is kind, but has Tyler been patient? Has Tyler been kind? It's about me, baby. It's about me, how I use my gifts, but let's go. Let's go to the word. Look at this, verse one. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, all my communicators, preachers, worship leaders, all that, but didn't love others, I would only be a what? A noisy gong. Nobody wants it. You may have something to say, and my grandpa used to say it all the time. Tyler, just because you got something to say doesn't mean anybody wants to listen to what you're saying. A lot of us, man, why don't people listen to me? Maybe it's you, it's not them. Well, why don't, why, why don't opportunities show up? Why doesn't this happen? I got so much to say, do you? Or do you want to hear yourself? Many times I want to talk so I hear myself, so I get validation. But it says right here, if you speak in all the languages, you preach all day long, you lead worship all day long, you serve people all day long. You post on stuff all day long. But you don't love others. You'll only be a noisy gong, a clanging cymbal. I remember I preached this not too long ago, and I was banging on a drum the whole time I was preaching. I was like, that's annoying. I don't want to do it again. But you'll be annoying. You can be anointed and annoying very easily. And where we miss this most, hear me, and I don't mean to step and spend, oh, Elections are coming up. Please, please receive this in grace, everybody in the room, everybody online. You cannot be rude on social media and righteous at church on Sunday morning. 
You cannot be divisive on Facebook, but then come and be unified in church on Sunday morning. The love of God does not stop when Sunday morning ends. God uses social media just as much as he uses Sunday morning. But you'll get mad when your gift isn't being used on Sunday morning. You'll get mad when people don't receive your gift at church on Sunday morning. It's probably because you've been rude all day, Monday through Friday on social media. Well, I don't like this. And then you'll get mad. I, I know people, uh, friends of mine that release music and they'll put like, hey guys, go listen to my music and nobody listens to their music. But because they've been a jerk to everyone on social media for the whole year leading up to the song being dropped, ain't nobody want to. You're, an you're anointed, love you. But you're annoying. That's not me. That's not me. That's not Tyler. That's what the word says. I'm annoying. And I, listen, I have to be careful that I don't use my gift to showcase who I am more than who God is. And this is one of those ones that, listen, we've been preaching some really cool ones. We've been preaching some really good messages. This is one of those like, hey, let's check your credit score real quick kind of messages. You know what I mean? I've got to figure out, am I, am I who God calls me to be because with a gift without any love there's no value there the check bounces there's nothing in it and you'll get really hurt you'll get really frustrated at how you're moving and this is really for people that are really trying to make moves like in their in their walk with God things like that this is almost like a teaching really for you for online and house you'll get really frustrated that you're not where God called you to be your gift makes in Proverbs it says the gift makes a room for you it does not keep you in the room how you love keeps you in the room. Track me, track with me, track with me. You, you're getting really frustrated that the, my ability to do this, my ability to do this, that my manager doesn't see this, that this stuff isn't happening. Your gift will get you th into the conversation. How you love in the conversation will determine what happens after the conversation. And this is something God's really kind of like teaching us ministers. He's teaching this Christians, these Christians right here. Like, guys, you wonder why people think you're annoying. You wonder why people don't listen to you. It's because you don't love. There's no love coming out of you. It's bankrupt. You're bankrupt. You've got nothing. You've got something shiny. Listen, can I put myself on blast this morning in house? Can I put myself on blast? Listen, when I got my first job, when I, got, when, when I was doing the application stuff and they hired me, they said, hey, we need a bank account to, to do direct deposit. And I I'm like 15 years old or something like that. I didn't have a bank account. So I go to the, to the bank. And I go and I open up my bank account and they're like, well, hey, you get a debit card. And I, listen, I had never had a debit card. So you already know, I felt rich. Ooh. And so they said, you can get the normal one or you can get like a custom one. And boy, I got a custom one. I said, well, I want this, I want this. And so it was my own personal debit card. And I remember I got it. And, and I had to show somebody, I had a girlfriend at the time. So I called her, I'm like, hey, we're going out. Listen, we're going out to dinner. I took her to somewhere nice like Red Lobster or Chili's or something like that. And whenever we get there, I'm like showing her, I'm showing her the debit card, right? I'm like, look at this thing. And she's like, that's cool. Like, she, she was just annoyed at me, honestly. She was just annoyed at me. But she said, Tyler, like, that's cool or whatever. And then the, the waiter comes with the check. And I'm like, hey, don't worry about it, boo. I got you. And I, and I give him the card. And he takes it and he walks into the back. And about two minutes later, he comes out and he's like, sir, your card's been declined. And I look at my girlfriend, I don't got nothing else. And she's like, Tyler, I've got it. Like, it's okay. And I felt so bad at the time. But I was showing her how shiny the card was. I, I had gotten the debit card. There was no value in the debit card. I had something that was shiny, but there was no substance inside of it. And many of us, we show up on Sunday mornings and I look good. I sound good. I'm blessed and highly favored. I wear the most colorful suit on Sunday morning. But the moment someone asks you for prayer, you're bankrupt. I got nothing to give you. I'm shiny with no substance. And too many people, this is what Paul's saying. You, you guys look really good. Tyler, you preach really good. But do you show up for anybody? Do you serve anybody? Do you love anybody? How much do you pray? How often do you pray? Is there any substance inside of you? No, man, I'm shiny. I look good, though. Listen, I look good. Turn to your neighbor and say, I look good. I look good. I look good. But what does it say right here? If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Verse 2. 
If I had the gift of prophecy, if I can preach and I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, what does it say? I would be nothing. Not only, listen, and he, taught, and, and he touches on identity here. I don't know if you notice the difference between you're annoying to now you, there's nothing in me. I have nothing to give. There's nothing inside of me of value, of substance, of anything. He says, if you can do all this, what good is all this if nobody wants to receive it? You know everything. Nobody, and, and, and we say it at the church all the time. What good is having all the answers if nobody asks you questions? Nobody wants to ask you questions. Nobody wants to know the things that you know. Nobody wants to know the things God's doing in your life. And the dangerous part when it comes to gifts, listen, and this is the last sermon we do on the gifts and then we're moving on to other things. The last thing, when you, you cannot seek and study your gift more than you seek and study God. I would rather, listen, I would rather be gifted than godly. And then you'll wonder why things are messed up in your life. I would rather look good. I'd rather look sexy than inside have substance inside of me. I'd rather you think I was a good preacher than be a good person. I'd rather think you, were, uh, you thought I was a good singer than I was servant. I'd rather you think that because I want to be gifted. I don't want to be godly. And we have to be careful that I don't seek after my gift more than I seek after God. Because it can't, listen, it cannot take you anywhere. And, you'll, and, and, and we get to it at the end. You'll get frustrated when your gift isn't taking you the places you thought it was going to take you. It's not because the gift is bad. It's because your heart using the gift is bad. So let me rearrange my heart for a second. We cannot, listen. Your gift isn't valuable when you get into green rooms. Your gift is valuable when you use your gift in hospital rooms for people. I'll know that my gift is good when I get in green rooms and I don't have to talk to nobody. No, 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 no. If, if the goal of your gift is to get into a green room, the enemy's probably using your gift in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. If I don't use my gift, if you're a worship leader, if you have never led worship next to a hospital bed for somebody dying of cancer, that is the goal of your gift. If I'm a preacher and my goal is to preach in front of millions, but I won't preach in front of the one person that is struggling in the room alone. What good is my gift? It's nothing. But we cannot seek after our gift more than we seek after God because we will struggle. We'll struggle every single time. The greatest sermon I ever heard was not from, and, and, I've, and I've had the honor to meet like some really great pastors and preachers over the years. The greatest sermon I ever heard, I was 19 years old and I was a youth pastor at a, at a church. And there's this, there's this young girl with learning disabilities and she'd sit in the back corner and, and no one would really talk to her. She wasn't very uh, verbal or anything like that. So she would sit in the back room. But every single Wednesday night, I'd walk in, I'd give her five, like I'd, I'd hug her, I'd say, how are you? And she'd like do like thumbs up. And I'd be like, all right, girl, you better stay out of trouble. And I'd walk away. And no one would really spend time with her or talk to her. And I remember one Wednesday night, I had been like doing that for like a year. One Wednesday night, she comes up to me and she gives me a piece of paper. And she like just like runs off really fast. And so I open, I open it and, and she said, Pastor Tyler. It was like in, I could hardly read the handwriting. It said, Pastor Tyler. And I'll never forget. It said, you are loved by God, period. And, 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 and she said, you are a strong tower and you're a good friend to me. Love, and it was her name. And I just broke down in that moment. I broke down right then and there because they were words I needed in that moment. I've heard some of the best preachers. I've read some of the best books. None of them had the impact that did. Not because she was a good speaker, not because she was a good writer, but because her heart was where it needed to be when I needed her heart to be there. Too many times I'm trying to be the, I'm trying to say the right words. I'm trying to do the right thing. When in reality, all you need is the right heart. All I need is a heart. If I would worry about my heart while I'm walking in my life, if I would worry about my heart as I utilize my gift, if I would worry about my heart, what do they say? It's the thought that counts when I give a gift. No, it's not. No, it doesn't. It's the heart that counts. It's not, the, it's not your mind. It's the thought. No, because I could really be saying, I'm going to give you this gift so I can get this from you. How many of y'all know somebody that manipulates by giving gifts? 
Just giving a gift is not the, is not the move. It's do I have the heart with the gift? Do I have the heart? And so many times, and what does it say? Look, and, and Rachel, if you want to complain, thank you. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, what? I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. You ever just feel like no matter what you do, you can't move forward? Like it doesn't matter. I switch jobs. I switch relationships. I change this. I change this. I can't gain anything. Well, you're, you're trying to change things with your mind, not your heart. You're trying to figure it out, not have faith to get you out. And many times the moment I'm trying to think my way out of a situation, I'm probably not relying on God and trusting God in my situation. But this is, you would have gained nothing, nothing if you didn't, if you didn't love. And so I got, so listen, I got something. You've probably been like, dang, Tyler, Tyler kind of leveled up. Tyler's kind of flexing on us today. You know what? I kind of am. I kind of am, but I got to grab something real quick. You've probably seen these things online. Listen, you ever seen this thing online? It's a diamond tester. You can test diamonds. You ever seen someone downtown, like maybe, or even at church, a club, whatever, and they're, they're wearing some like jewelry? Me, I've always just assumed they were real. Like if you wear jewelry, I assume it's real. But I've been seeing online where people go downtown and they walk up to people with nice jewelry and they, if it doesn't, listen, if it doesn't beep, it's not real. Listen, and I got this, I'm not gonna tell you where. If it doesn't beep, it's not real. It didn't move. It's not real. Let me try this one. It's not real. But it looks real. It looks shiny. It looks nice until it was tested. The moment it was tested, there were no questions if it was real or not. Many of us on Sunday morning, I like to show up nice. I like to show up shiny. I like to show up bright, but the moment I'm tested, it all goes away. The moment someone begins to push, it all goes away. The moment someone questions me, it all goes away. The moment I'm tested by the enemy, it all goes away. The moment my anointing and my gift doesn't get me where I think it ought to go, it all goes away. Maybe it's not because I wasn't shiny. Maybe it's because there was no substance. Something can look expensive but cost nothing. And many of us on Sunday morning, we look really good, but there's not much good we've done. There's not much serving we've done. There's not much loving we've done. I've preached for hours, prayed for minutes. I've sang for hours, I've served for minutes. And until something gets tested, you don't know how strong it really is. And in your life, listen, and in your life, there will be moments where what, what God put in your life needs to be tested. So, watch this. So you know that it's real. Sometimes you need the reminder that you're still called. Sometimes you need the reminder that you're still anointed. Sometimes you need the reminder that God still chose you for the thing he called you to do years ago, even though you've ran around. You know what I learned about diamonds, though? You know what I learned about diamonds this, this past weekend? When they're dirty, it's hard to pick up on how authentic it really is. So if I was to test a dirty diamond, it may not pop up as a true diamond. It's not because the value wasn't there. It's because there was something on top of it that was hindering it from, from me being able to see the value of it. And a lot of times, listen, and a lot of times our anointing isn't bad. It's just a little muddied up. We've allowed the trauma to cover it up. We've allowed the dirt from our past to cover it up. We've allowed the guilt to cover it up. We've allowed the shame to cover it up. And now people can't see it. It's not because it's not there. It's just other things are covering on top of it. You'll get so burnt up. Why don't people see me shining like that? There might be some stuff in the way. Because 
That's what he's saying. You've got a gift. He's not saying your gift is wrong. He's not saying you're not gifted. He's not saying you're not talented. He's not saying you're not anointed. He's just saying there are things that are keeping you from being everything I created you to be. And the first of it is your lack of loving others. Like I said, this is not a fun message. This is one of those ones where Tyler questions his whole existence as a preacher. Do I love people the way they ought to be loved? Do I serve people? Do not try to lead people and not love the people God's called you to leave. lead. Do not, do not, do not. That's the dangerous part when you figure out what your gift set is, when you spend time with the Holy Spirit. This church, it's in Corinth, they were killing it except for in their area of I don't love others. I'm more focused on my gift than the person receiving the gift. I cannot be so enthralled with my gift. I cannot be so enthralled with my anointing. And some of y'all are like, no, well, I don't even care. Like, I don't care if anyone ever sees my anointing. No, that's why you have it. Do not, do not undervalue what God put in you. Do not. Because you will really go, well, I don't really care about my gift. I don't really care about my anointing. I don't care if it takes me anywhere. It's supposed to take you somewhere. That's why God put you there. That's why God gave it to you. That's why. But when you get there, but when you get there, be very careful. Because then what does it say? Verse 4, this is the wedding. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful. It always endures through every circumstance. Prophecy is speaking. Of, and then it begins to go. It's saying again, but love will last forever. We don't talk about love enough, I don't think. If that's the currency that we move in, I don't talk enough about love. Just listen to me preach and say amen. That's what I want. No, no, no. D did I love you though? Did I serve you though? Did I show up for you though? So this chain is fake. I know that's crazy for you to think, but the chain's fake. You know what it's made of? Glass. That's what... It has the appearance of diamonds, but it doesn't hold up like diamonds. It's made of glass. So if I shattered this right now, it would break into millions of pieces and its value would be gone. But if this was real diamond, you couldn't shatter it. You might be able to hurt it. You might be able to scuff it. You might be able to rip the, the chain apart, but the diamond still has its value. Glass doesn't though. Glass, when it gets put under pressure, it shatters. Diamonds doesn't under pressure. Many of us, we don't know what our faith is really built on until it gets tested, do we? You don't know what the gift you have in your life really is until you go through some pressure. You don't know what seeking after God really is until the devil really tries you. You don't know what reading the word is until you can't make ends meet. You don't know what prayer really is until someone's about to lose their lo you're about to lose a loved one and you're seeking the Lord. You don't know what your faith is really made of until it gets tested. But we'll rebuke the test. No, 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 no. The test is showing you how pure your faith is. It's showing you how powerful your faith is. Don't rebuke the hard season. Let it refine you. Let it do something in you. And that's the moment you'll know. Listen, that's the moment you'll know. And I know that this is kind of one of those messages for maybe I don't feel like I'm getting where I'm called to go. I feel like I, 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 I'm called. God loves me. The Holy Spirit's moving in my life. But I'm just here. I'm here. Are you loving? Are you loving others in the midst of it? Are you love? Even when my gift isn't being used, am I loving people? Am I serving people? Am I there for people? And then a lot of times, and people, you know, we've been doing the spiritual gift stuff online. If, if you want, you can reach out, whatever, about finding what your spiritual gift is. A lot of people go, well, I don't know. Like, it says it, but I don't know. As you begin to serve people, you'll figure out because they'll ask you for your gift. You may not see your gift, they see your gift. 
What have people in, in what I say, like, yeah, you can take the test. I, I love it, all of that. What do people ask you to do already? That's probably your gift. I had this lady one time, she comes up to me, she goes, I want to preach, but nobody wants me to preach. And, and all I said was like, well, well, what do people ask you to do? She said, they always want me to bake cakes. And I said, you do got some good cakes. Like, I'm telling you, like, the cakes are good. And she was like, but I want to preach. And I said, but what if whenever you deliver the cake, while you're in their house with them, they don't need a word from you? What makes you think that this gift here of giving cakes, of being able to, to cook, isn't just a ploy for God to really use your ability to preach, but you'll get mad and I'll never cook it again until I preach, when in reality, the cake was what got you in so that you could preach. But you'll think, well, if it's not with a microphone. I kind of wrote this down. I wasn't sure if I was going to say it. If you work with children, students, daycare, you have children, whatever it is, you're the most important preacher on this planet, hands down. Hands down. Don't allow the enemy. Do not allow the enemy when you're in your classroom, when you're with the kids and it's getting heavy and the, and the parents are arguing at you. You are the most powerful preacher on this planet. But if the enemy can get you to doubt your calling, if the enemy can get you to walk into work not walking in peace, not walking in joy, not walking in love, he's not just, he's not just robbing you, he's robbing the children and the next generation. Not all gifts look like I've got a microphone and I sing and I preach. Stop. You better stop that. I'll take any, any coach in America does something more important than I do. Any teacher in America does something more important. Any doctor in America does something more than I do. Don't lose sight of where God has you right now. In-house, online, you can really lose sight because I want to get there. No, you're here now. You're where you need to be now. Do not get it twisted. Do not get it twisted. And so that's my prayer. You feel crushed in this season. Like there's a weight on you. Christians cannot be possessed. They can only be oppressed. You know what oppressed means? Something's on top of you. It's weighing on you. And because the enemy cannot enter a pure soul, he cannot enter a, a spirit that is clinging to the Holy Spirit. He cannot enter there, so he will hang on top of you so he makes your walk with God heavier. And so many, listen, so many Christians, because they feel the, the oppression, they begin to go, well, let me drop my gift so it's lighter. Do not drop your gift. Do not drop your anointing because the enemy is attacking you. Do not. Because if he does, he will rob the people that need your healing, that need your message, that need your word, that need your love. That's how he does it. But you feel, pre like you feel pre online. So I don't know, uh, this, this, I didn't even write this. You feel a weight on top of you right now. Do not drop what God has given you so it feels lighter. That will be, the, that's the dangerous thing that the enemy does. The moment I can get on top of them, the moment I can make the money seem a little bit too much, the moment I can make the marriage seem a little too much, the moment I can make the singleness seem a little too much, the moment I can make the gossip seem a little too much, I, they'll put it down. They'll put down their anointing. They'll put down their calling. They'll put down their gifting. And the devil goes, I got them. I got them. All I had to do was make it heavy. When in reality, that's what God can use. What is it? Romans 8, 28. God uses everything. God turns everything together for good. You get to see how strong your faith really was. You get to see how strong your anointing really was because I made it through. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. But God, I'm, I'm sorry when I put the focus on I'm not where I think I should be. Rather than here I am right now, God, use me. I'm sorry, when I've done everything to try to elevate myself, all I've done was thought about myself. All I've done was worried about everything else except for who are the people around me that need, my, that need me to pray for them, that meet, need me to love on them, that need me to serve them. 
Holy Spirit, we want to be close to you, but I want to be used by you like I never have before. In this next season, I want to walk in my anointing. I want to walk in my gift set like I never have before. Not because I want to elevate myself, but because I know there are people that need to be reminded of how good God is. And so I will continue to walk in my anointing and walk in my calling. God, I'm sorry. Man, it's gotten heavy. Money. My mind, the depression, the anxiety, the bad decisions, the mistakes, the stress. It's really made me question everything I've ever believed. I don't even know like that I, if, I, if I feel still called like, you, like I did back in the day. There's just dirt on me. It's just hidden a little bit more. Lord, we run to you. Today we run to you. Today we spend time with you. Today I hear from you. I'm done hearing from everyone else. I'm done going to every other website. I'm done going to every other self-help book. I'm done. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. You can keep that. Today I run to you. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. It's your name we pray and everybody said, amen. I can't act like everybody cause I'm different. I can't walk like everybody cause I'm different. I can't please everybody cause I'm different. I can't mess with everybody so I'm sorry if I'm inconsistent. I can't try to look like you, I just ain't got the time. I don't wanna move like you, I walk a different line. Yeah, they keep pulling me. Yeah, they keep pushing me. Yeah, they keep pulling me. And that's why. I can't act like everybody cause I'm different I can't walk like everybody cause I'm different I can't please everybody cause I'm different I can't mess with everybody so I'm sorry if I'm inconsistent I can't act like everybody cause I'm different I can't walk like everybody cause I'm different I can't please everybody cause I'm different I can't mess with everybody so I'm sorry if I'm inconsistent